Welcome to the CADET Quick Training video on the data log. The data log can be found under your information menu and you have two options available. One, you can create a data log recording or two, you can go right into the data log viewer and view previous data logs that you have saved on your on your laptop there. So basically what the data log is, is it's a way that you can um, graph certain parameters over a period of time at certain sample rates and pull them up then in a graph graphical format and try and analyze what's going on on your machine. So it gives you a way to kind of see over time what's been happening uh, with certain parameters and see if you know certain parameters have spiked and caused other parameters then to drop out and fail or, or things along those lines. So the first screen you come to in the recorder is your settings screen. You'll notice you have two tabs up here, general and auto trigger. We will talk about auto trigger uh, first, but you can't actually demonstrate auto trigger within the trainer because most of the values are not changing. But basically what auto trigger will do is say you've noticed um, that a certain thing, you know, if you get above a certain pressure, that things start going crazy on your machine. So what you can do is set up this auto trigger and say that if our engine oil pressure is greater than 200 PSI, start this data log recording. And what that will do is, since you have your ET connected, you can leave your laptop sitting in there and whenever that machine hits that 200 PSI, Caddy T will automatically kick this data log off for you, as opposed to you having to sit and watch it and then once you get to 200, clicking the start button yourself. So it makes sure that as soon as it happens, it, it kicks off that data log. And you can kind of set up dual conditions using your AND and OR buttons here um, and parameters off various ECMs as well. So that's kind of how the auto trigger works. So we'll go ahead and disable that and go back to our general tab. Uh, the first thing you'll see here is the sample rate. Um, you can see we have various uh, preset options on, on what your sample rate can be. You can set this per hour or per minute. Um, or there's also a custom setting that you can go into. And this will allow you to put in very specific sample times. So right now, these are not repeating values. If we were to run this data log, we would get a data log file that has four very distinct data points in it at those times that you've specified. But again, you can come in and say you want one at 55 seconds, one at, at uh, six minutes, you know, and you'd get a data log with, with data points at those um, specific issues. <clears throat> so we'll go back over here and do per minute. Um, you can run a data log for up to 99 hours and 240 samples per minute. So you want to pay attention to what your sample rates are and how long you're running your data log because if you kind of max it out like that, you're going to end up with a very large file uh, that may end up crashing your PC or you know not have room to save it all. So you can you have the options to create those large files if you need to, <clears throat> but you you want to try and narrow it down to a, a smaller period of time if you can. And then we have, like I said, your duration here. You can do minutes, hours, and then we have what's called a pre-trigger. And you can go up to 30 seconds on your pre-trigger. And what the pre-trigger is, is the ECM is storing um, this parameter's data on there, and it's keeping it for a max of, you know, 30 seconds at a time. So what happens is if you start a data log, you might want to see what was going on right prior to when you started that data log. Again, kind of going back to our discussion on the auto trigger, if you've noticed that when something gets up to a certain level that everything starts going haywire, this will give you the option to kind of see those parameters in the 30 seconds um, before you started that data log to see if something caused that to spike, you know, over that certain pressure and then kick off the data log. So just gives you a little more information that you can uh, <clears throat> use for analysis. And then the bottom part here is where you actually tell it what parameters you want to see. So you can go through each ECM and you click your add button here and you can just pick one of the groups here. Or you can, you know, select a temporary group of your own. Click OK. And then we'll go in, put some on the engine as well. So we'll do our pressures here. Click OK. And then once you're ready and you have all your parameters set up, just go ahead and click OK. 
and you'll see that CAD ET is setting up this data log on the ECM itself. It's getting <clears throat> that data log prepared uh, to record these certain parameters. And then once it gets it all set up on the ECM itself, then we can go ahead and hit the start button here. And the more parameters and more ECMs that it has to go through, the longer it will take to, to get this test set up. But it will kind of tell you what status it's in there. Go ahead and click your start button. And one thing to note while this is running here, you'll see the message on the screen here. It says if you have a sample rate that's less than 30 samples per minute, you can actually navigate to a different screen in ET and, and do other things. So if you don't need you know, hundreds upon hundreds of samples, um, you can look at maybe your status screen while your data log is running, look at your diagnostics and see what's going on there. So you can do some other things while your data log is recording. Once you get to that 30 samples per minute and above, if you try and navigate away, it's just simply too much information coming through that data link at one time and it causes that connection to be unstable and you could end up losing your connection and then having to reconnect and start things over again. So that's kind of what that warning message means there. So we go ahead and stop the uh, recorder here and then the next thing that will happen is CADET will pull up the graph of this uh, data log that we just ran. And then you'll see on the graph that you have some some options to play around with it as well, uh, similar to the real-time graphing feature that we saw earlier. Okay, so then you can go ahead and click your graph and you'll see that you have your available parameters here. You can pick up to 12 parameters to see at one time and this works like the other screens. You can either use your arrows or you can just double click things. Once you get your 12 parameters you want, click OK. And you'll see that CADET pulls these up on, on the graph itself here. And this is very similar. If you only want to see certain parameters, just uncheck them. Uncheck the other ones. You can remove your legend if you need it back. You can pull that up here. Uh, if you want to change which parameters you have, so if you've looked at these 12 and you can't find what you're looking for, just click on your parameters button over here and then you can switch switch them out and put other ones in there uh, if you want to. So again on the graph here, um, we have some certain settings here. Uh, one is to set the background color. This is again very helpful if you're out in the sun. You can change both your background and your line color to provide certain contrast, make it a little easier to see, as well as Again, for colorblind users, you can make these so that you can tell the difference between the lines that you're looking at here, as well as certain other uh, just graph options there. You can change your axes. Uh, you can set your own axis or use the automatic settings that come in um, from the ECMs. And then you can also zoom in on this graph. So if you just click and drag, you'll see that it will allow you to zoom in on that parameter. And if you just right click, it takes your graph back to your default view. Um, CADET, if you click on certain data points, you'll notice down here we'll do some simple arithmetic for you so you can tell the change in a parameter uh, from point to point. And then lastly, we have our time mode button here, which you'll see right now we're on PC clock time. And if we click the button, it's going to go to time in seconds. And I wanted to show this to you because you'll see that there's a zero point and this is where we actually click the start button and if you crawl, recall when we set it up we had 30 second pre-trigger and this is the 30 seconds of data then that was on the ECM prior to when we hit start and that was pulled into that graph as well. So that concludes the demonstration on the data log feature.